guys, welcome back to World of Tanks. My name is Bruce and today I want to talk about how to play heavily armored tank destroyers. Furthermore, I will offer you 10 golden tips in order to improve your gameplay. If you're interested in more reviews and gameplay, go to YouTube and search for World of Tanks with Bruce to get all of my videos or click on the subscribe button. In addition to this, you can now also support me on Patreon, so feel free to follow this link and become a patron. And now, let's go. Heavily armored tank destroyers are very special vehicles in World of Tanks. They are not versatile and flexible at all as they lack speed and mobility. In addition to this, they usually don't have a rotatable turret as they are tank destroyers. However, they have outstanding firepower with good penetration values, high alpha guns and more often than not, a decent damage per minute. The other advantage is their above average armor. In this tutorial, I will give you 10 golden tips to incorporate your tank destroyer gameplay so that you can and will always be where the fight takes place and be a valuable part of your team which is actually able to decide games. Before we start with some gameplay, we should take a look at the armor profile of the T95 and this actually brings me to tip number one which is be an expert on your tank's armor. So here we are with the frontal armor of the T90, uh, sorry, the T28, and we are comparing the armor against the regular ammunition of the AMX 5100 with its 232 millimeters of penetration, which is actually pretty good for a tier A tank. But as you can see, the armor frontally is pretty, pretty strong. The hull is about 254, so no chance hit for him to actually penetrate us. Plus, the gun mantle is exceptionally strong. Even the lower hull is 239, 240, so only about a 39 to 40% chance of hitting us. But keep in mind, you have cupolas, which can easily be penetrated if they are hit by the enemy tank. So, what happens if the AMX 5100 would switch to its premium ammunition with 263 millimeters of penetration? Now, then the, the armor actually looks a bit different because now he has a 66% chance of penetrating. Um, still not too good, so we will bounce, let's say, every third shot. But um, as you can see, the armor would be now completely yeah, difficult. Your armor is not as good anymore as it was compared to the regular shells. Now, what happens if you actually compare your armor against a tier 10 tank? So against the T110E4, the the American tier 10 tank destroyer. As you can see, even with using regular ammunition with its 295 millimeters of penetration, your armor is worth nothing and can be easily penetrated. And if the T-134 even moves to its premium ammunition, you can see that your whole tank can be easily penetrated, maybe apart from the gun mantlet. And so what I want to tell you is you have to be an expert on your tank's armor and you have to know whether you can play aggressively or whether you have to play a little bit more defensively. And um, yeah, with this knowledge, let's now jump into the first game. Alright guys, here we are in the first game. We are spawning in a tier 10 matchup on Kokoroka in the south. And I picked this replay in order to show you how you should act if you are a low tier tank because um, we just talked about the armor profile and you have to keep in mind that the armor profile is not equally valuable in every game it rather depends on whether you are top tier or whether you are low tier and so having talked about the armor profile it actually brings me to tip number two this is try to hide your hit points with heavily armored tank destroyers, your frontal armor is decent, however, you still have weak points as we just saw in the armor profile. And so, make it hard for your opponents to actually hit them. And you can do this with waggling around, so left and right, left and right, if you are approaching your opponent. So, you never want to sit completely still in front of your opponents, rather, you want to kind of move your tank left and right, waggling it around so that the enemy has a hard time to actually hit your weak spots. Now, such tanks, like the T28 or also the T95, um, sometimes have relatively strong cupola, so the cupola itself is a weak spot, but as soon as your opponents only hit the side of the cupola, the shot actually bounces. 
And so with waggling around, you can actually make it difficult for the enemy to, to hit your, your weak spot. So this is extremely important to keep in mind anytime you are approaching an, um, an enemy tank. So um, usually on Malinovka with my heavy tank or with my light tank or um, especially with medium tank, I would never go to this flank and just sit in the back. And so at the beginning you saw me being a little bit reluctant on, um, yeah, actually I didn't know where to go and I was thinking about it and this actually brings me to tip number three, which is carefully choose one flank. You will not be able to switch the flank easily like in a light or medium tank later on in the game. So with the heavily armored tank destroyer, which is very slow, you carefully have to choose your flank because um, once you go to one flank, you most likely will be stuck for the remainder of the game. So it is very crucial to consciously like, take that into consideration and keep that in mind. So make a thorough assessment at the beginning of the game. Ah, here you go, we can hit the standard B. And um, then choose your respective side. Um, yeah, so that is tip number three. Now can we hit the standard B once again, maybe a blind shot. I think this was not a hit actually, uh, but here we go. So um, in such a game, as I told you with the little rundown on the armor profile, our armor is actually not too strong. Keep in mind we have an enemy T110E4, actually two of them, plus we have a T95 in the enemy team, plus the German T9 tank destroyer, the Wachmann on Panzer IV. So all of those tanks actually are able to penetrate our frontal armor, so we need to play defensively. Now, tip number four that I have for you is use equipment to boost your firepower and your mobility. Lots of times I see people playing in a heavy armor tank destroyer and they're still like using the, let's say, standard equipment for heavy tanks, which is binoculars and camo value, or camo, sorry, camo net in order to increase the view range and the uh, camo value of the tank. But in my opinion, this is nonsense because in a heavily armored tank destroyer, you want to make pressure. You want to be an active part of, of your team. Now, we will come to this later, but um, you never want to sit in the back of the map like for the remainder of the game. So in my opinion, such equipment is useless. Instead, you should use, for example, vertical stabilizer or maybe uh, but I'm not using vertical stabilizer because the gun handling is good anyways, but I'm using um, a gun rammer to boost my DPM. I'm uh, actually not using equipment uh, to increase the, or to improve the gun handling, but as I said, it's not important on this tank. And instead I'm using a turbocharger to actually increase the speed of the tank. Now, usually I'm of the opinion that it makes more sense to increase or to improve the strength of the tank rather than to decrease Moving the deficiencies. Because after all, most of the equip most of the equipment gives you a relative bonus, so the absolute amount of improvement is is uh, higher if you are boosting your strength. However, the biggest weakness of heavily armored tank destroyers, and this is basically the same for heavily armored heavy tanks like the mouse or the VK-101 is the slow speed. And so in this case, you can, I mean, the top speed of the T-28 is what, uh, about 22 uh, kilometers per hour. And so with using a turbocharger, you can significantly increase the speed by approximately 20%. And so this makes the tank much more useful if you, are, if you have to follow your heavy tanks. All right, so now as you can see, we want to move forward. Why? Because the T95 and the, 70, uh, the 7032 are making pressure. And what you have to keep in mind, no matter whether you are low tier or top tier, you have to follow your heavy tanks and play an active role in your in your game. And so we followed the T95 and the 703 in order to make sure that as soon as tanks are spotted off the enemy team, they will be within our random range uh, circle, which is the yellow one, so that we can actually get shots. And uh, I mean, this is typical second line gameplay. 
in my opinion. But we want to make sure to advance like behind the T95 in this case. So let's see, can we get a shot on the object 252? So the Soviet defender, no, unfortunately, not too bad. Um, I think the distance is actually too big. Yeah, okay. Maybe on the T110 E4. Here go. Nice. And then, so the T95 is actually absorbing every shot and we can now get damage and not losing hit points. So now, perfect. The two um, most dangerous tech destroyers of the enemy team are now dead. And um, yeah, we can actually talk about uh, tip number six, which is what I just said, actively support your heavy, your heavy tanks. Don't just camp in the back and conduct red line sniping. This is not the task of your tank. The task of your tank in a heavily armored tank destroyer is to make pressure. And the T95 is actually a perfect example in this game. He is not sitting at the back, but he is leading the advance and making pressure. And same for us. We are kind of following him because we are, after all, low tier. But soon we will even advance further and try to make damage. So um, this was tip number six. Tip number seven is trade your hit points. Don't be the player who at the end of the game still has all of his hit points remaining. And so this is what we want to do right now. The game is 8 to 5, so we are leading, we are winning the game, and we still have 1500 HP to trade. So, so we don't have to care about the T95, um, nor about the weapon drag on Panzer 4. So we can just move forward, and if they will hit us, it does matter because we still have um, HP to, to trade and so we want to move forward maybe we can spot the enemy team and get assisting damage but, but um, first of all we want to make okay team TNH is dead we want to make damage on our own and so we um, with this playstyle we managed to get 2000 damage which is in my opinion a decent result already in a tier 10 matchup so let's just simply advance and um, so tip number six is, um, oh sorry, tip number seven is um, be on an open map. Like um, if you have the possibility, you should in such a tank focus on the, what I call two portions of the map. So want to make sure that you never get flanked. So open maps are usually bad, however, not as bad as, in, uh, as on a city map where you can easily get flanked and attacked from behind so in addition to this you should train obviously repairs right from the get-go so that you said that once you attract your uh, repair speed is increased but um, in general you should make sure that you are not that you are not getting um, uh, um, not getting oh, that's actually wrong so that you not, are not getting flanked and uh, so, so you should always focus on the two portions of the map. So what, what we did, once we advanced, we went right, we advanced right here. So next to this little, um, yeah, bridge line, you could call it, so that we could not get taken under fire from this side, um, where the T95 was standing right here. And so, um, yeah, but if you think on a map like, uh, for example, um, Mountain Pass, um, a map which is uh, pretty much the opposite of an open map, this is where you can really shine. And um, if a tank tries to flank you, you should fall to the side, so so reverse to the uh, to the border of the map. So in this case, right here. So if a tank would try to circle you, he would he is likely to set up a circle of death, uh, continuously circling you. And you can um, you can uh, get rid of this by removing backwards towards the towards the border of the map, um, so that he does not have this chance. So yeah, those were the uh, first seven tips, and now let's jump into the next game and continue with tip number eight. Okay, second game in the T28. This time we're spawning on cliff with two artilleries. Fortunately, no light tank. And I guess most players in a tank destroyer on this map would either go to the one lane or would go to the A5 position, so to this bush, in order to basically snipe from the back of the map. But as you know, I already told you that you should actively support your heavies, or let's say your teammates. And I certainly 
do not want to um, uh, play too passively and uh, just conduct red line sniping. Because after all, I'm an heavily armored tank destroyer, and uh, as we are in a tier 8 matchup, or let's say tier 8, tier 7 matchup this time, my armor is actually pretty strong in this uh, scenario. So I think the only tanks that will be able to promptly penetrate me are the tier 8 tanks if they are loading their premium ammunition. Um, and this only applies to my lower hull and to my cola. So I can certainly play much much more aggressively than compared to the first game. Now, um, this actually brings me to tip number eight, which is be aggressive as soon as it is possible. And um, I think we kind of found the, the correct timing for playing aggressively in the last game, which was pretty much at the end of the game. But in this game, it is differently. So um, I can instantaneously play aggressively and um, I want to do it. Now, why did I not go to the south? Because I think the gameplay in the south is pretty much stationary. Oh, sorry, it's not the south, it's actually the, um, it's actually the west. So the gameplay in the west is uh, pretty stationary. And so um, instead of wasting my time there, I want to play aggressively and win the rest of the map together with my team. Now, um, as you can see, we have support of the from the IS-5 and the Leo, and this brings me to tip number uh, sorry number nine, which is never go on a flank on your own. As soon as you are alone, you can get pushed, flanked, tracked, and defeated. So as long as you have support, this is not the case, and so never ever go on a flank on your own with a turretless, heavily armored tank destroyer, or actually with any turretless tank destroyer. This is extremely important, and now we want to support the IS-5 and take out the, the IS-3 Alpha, but here you go, it's taken out, and now let's get a shot on the Super Cat. and he has actually no chance whatsoever, so this is also a good example, so um, if we were alone, those two tanks could, at least one of those tanks, could flank us and we would have no chance um, of uh, defeating them. But now, as we have support, this is not the case. So, uh, right here we are playing aggressively, we are supporting our heavy tanks at the, at the forefront. And this is it. this is exactly what you should do in your heavily armored tank destroyer. Um, here we go. So um, we will continue to play aggressively. Let's see, so most yeah, uh, I bet the Yak Panther is in this position. But now maybe we can get a shot on the VK. Oh, oh, nice. So we are spotted, but that's all right. And you know what? I think I will turn around um, and also see whether I can get shots on the Carnival Action X. Let's see... I'll just park myself next to the... Vehicle. Looks like the Carnival is uh, AFK. Let's turn the turret maybe towards us, I don't know, maybe towards the, the other side, but yeah, that's how it is, okay. So yeah, when playing aggressively, um, we made uh, we already made 2600 damage and now I want to keep pushing forward aggressively and this is actually tip number 10 Use your armor to bait shots. You have the you have a good or Let's say strong armor. So don't let the other tanks take shots um, Or let's let's say don't let the other tanks bait shots because as they have a weaker armor profile compared to you This will most li most likely result in uh, the other tanks losing their HP much quicker than you would because you have the best armor profile in the game. And so, as you can see, I'm moving forward aggressively and I am bouncing quite some shots because I have a strong armor profile. Now, I can um, uh, waggle around a little bit to um, further bounce shots or to, to increase the probability of bouncing shots. And so, my team can advance forward behind me and save hit points because I am baiting all those shots. So this is what you should do in a heavily armored tank destroyer. This is your job. You have to um, expose your tanks so that you receive the shots. But 
because your armor profile is as strong or is, uh, yeah, is, is that strong, um, this does not necessarily mean that you will lose all your HP. If you have made the correct assessment, as I showed you in the previous game, um, obviously you cannot do this in a tier 10 matchup. But this is why, why I showed you both games, one tier 10 matchup and now one tier 7 game basically, it's a tier, tier 8, tier 7 match um, so that you have two good examples on how to conduct your or how to how to play a heavily armored tank destroyer like the t28 so yeah this gameplay is actually pretty nice if you are i mean being in a tier 10 match means that you have to be extremely patient but um as lo as soon as you are entering a tier 10 or a tier 7 or even tier 6 matchup you can play it extremely aggressively and you, you just have to press the the w key and keep moving forwards the... um so yeah this is what you should do and the biggest mistake that you can do in your heavily armor tank destroyer is to sit at the end of the map red line and conduct sniping just like in other tank destroyers which are actually lacking armor so conduct red line sniping if you're sitting in your Stritzwang, in your swedish tank destroyer or maybe in your griller but certainly not if you're playing a tank like the t28 the t95 um the tortoise or um, other heavily armored tank destroyers Alright guys, that was it for today with 10 golden tips on how to play heavily armored tank destroyers. Do you like this kind of tank class? Do you have a preferred heavily armored tank destroyer like the T95 or the Badger? Just leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Consider subscribing to my channel and I see you next time in another World of Tanks video.